Sits it pass through in flying colours. He'll play Karen Hachanov in the semi final. The number 18 seed taking out Sebi Kordu, who had a wrist problem. Hachanov winning 7 6 6 3. Three love, a retirement in the third set. He knew it was tough. Forget the three zit scoreline. He had pressure. Is that pressure now Stephanos, with Jim? You were super fired up, and I understand why. That was a very difficult match. Even though it was three sets, he was playing some amazing tennis. What were the keys for you tonight to get the win? Well, yeah, I can say it was a, a Ferdinkum type of performance. <laughs> it was, <laughs> but um, you know, I did I did a lot of. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It felt different this time uh, from uh, any other match. Uh, um, but the most important thing at the end is that I found a solution. It was a very difficult three-setter, one of the most difficult ones I had, uh, I had um, uh, so far in the competition. Uh, I think uh, Yiri played, uh, had a very good tournament. You know, he's someone who has started playing well recently, and I wish him the very best in the future because he's, uh, you know, he's a great player. Um, I had to deal. I had to deal with the ground strokes. They were coming off the racket from the other side of the court, much heavier, much deeper. So that was a, a task in which I had to uh, really put my heart out there and, you know, give it my best. I know in the tie break, you know, there were. Uh, it became a very crucial moment in that particular tie break. I think of who's gonna sort of get back into the match. Uh, in my sort of, uh, in my the way I saw it, it was, you know, that was my opportunity to to really take a massive lead there, and I'm very happy with the way I uh, closed the second set. Well, the tiebreak was an incredible level of tennis from you, because he was lifting too. That second set, you guys, the ground strokes you were hitting were some of the fastest we're probably going to see all season long. It was amazing. The third set, you faced a real challenge. Love 40 on your serve. How'd you get out of that jam? Um, experience. <laughs> Good. Um, experience and, uh, uh, and some good Spartan attitude, too. Okay, very nice. You've, um, speaking of Spartan, you've, you've talked about how while there is no Grand Slam tournament in Greece, this feels like your home Grand Slam. How was the crowd for you tonight? Can you hear them? <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Australia is such a great country. Um, I like a lot of Aussie things, you know. Um, one of my favorite exorcists comes from Australia, Margot Robbie. I wish I can. Margot Robbie? Um, are you pitching right now? What, what's happening? Am I what? Pitching? Are you like, you know, making an, an offer? What are we seeing here? It would be nice to see you over there one day. Okay. <laughs> So you're, you're ex officially extending an invitation to Margot Robbie. I just want to be crystal clear here. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, not, that's, not, that's not it. That's not it. Um, yeah. I like a lot of um, things in Australia. You know, the, the people are very welcoming. I've said that so many times. I'll keep saying it because it's very true. Um, I grew up in a place that is very similar in, in terms of conditions and lifestyle, and I find myself feeling home when I'm here because, you know, it's not too tropical and it's not too humid and it very, very much feels like home. And uh, uh, I know, you know, the French players have Roland Garros as their home Grand Slam. Uh, the British players have Wimbledon. Uh, the Americans have US Open. For me, uh, the Australian Open is always going to be my home Grand Slam. I feel very much loved here. The other day when we got to chat out here, you, you made another pitch, not to Margo. This was to real estate brokers. You're, you're hoping that some real estate brokers would reach out. Have you had any bites? Are you, like, are there, are you looking for a home here in Melbourne? Or? Look, I'll tell you something. I mean, let's forget real estate for a moment, though, because okay. we, we have plenty of time for that. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've recently like, sort of became, you know, 
I've been, been putting a lot of when it comes to charity, and I would love one day, hopefully, you know, winning the Aussie Open and giving a big portion of, of uh, the prize money to build a school in Victoria, which is the state of education. I'd like to do that. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, why, why is that important to you? That is, uh, that is, let's put tennis on the side because there are much more important things in life, I believe. Um, I saw that Victoria is the state of education and that kind of, there's an idea for me over there uh, that came to my mind and uh, I saw um, how difficult it, it, it is for a lot of kids around the world to go to school and get proper education, which is important because, uh, you know, um, not, not all kids uh, grow up uh, privileged, so I would really like to provide, give an opportunity to kids uh, here in, in, in this state to, to build a school and provide them with free education and anything else, yeah. That's amazing. And, that's, and, to, put it, and to put it into words, that's what Australia means to me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's one more reason to hope that Stefano Tsitsipas keeps going here at the Australian Open. Fine performance tonight. He's doing everything he can to endear himself to the Aussie public, and his tennis certainly doing the talking. So it's Tsitsipas against Hachanov in the semi final. Hi, I'm John McEnroe, and welcome to Eurosport Tennis on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Tennis.